Thank you for joining us today on Body Ecology Living with me, Donna Gates. I have a special guest on. Of course, I say this all the time, but uh, I'm very fortunate to be friends with Dr. Sarah Gottfried. And we have talked before. I'm hoping that you heard our previous podcast. Uh, that Because Sarah did a, um, her first book also on hormones and balancing the hormones, but she has a brand new book called The Hormone Reset Diet. And this takes the whole concept of hormones to another level. So we're very fortunate to have her today. I know that lots of women now have their antennas up and they're excited because there's a, a lot of women out there with hormone problems. And we know, many of us that have weight problems, we know that our hormones are connected to our weight. I just want to tell you a little bit about Dr. Sarah Gottfried, if you don't know who she is already, in case you've been living in a closet somewhere. Uh, well, she's a New York Times bestselling author of The Hormone Cure. After graduating from the Physician Scientist Training Program at Harvard Medical School and MIT, Dr. Gottfried completed her residency at the University of California at San Francisco. She's a board-certified gynecologist who teaches natural hormone balancing in her online programs so that women can lose weight, detoxify, and feel great. She lives in Berkeley, California with her husband and two daughters, two beautiful daughters that are the light of her life. And you can find her at hormonereset.com. Now, I could go on and on and on because there's a lot of interesting things about her. Believe it or not, besides being a Harvard-educated physician and speaker, she's a yoga teacher. I have an idea that when you listen to Dr. Sarah talking today, you'll see that she's not your average doctor. We're very fortunate to have her today. Welcome, Sarah. Oh, thank you so much, Donna. I, you know, I, I just really love what you bring to the world, and it's such an honor to be on your show. Oh, thank you for that, too. Well, gosh, you know, I don't exactly know where to begin uh, because the book has great information. Um, I, th- I mean, it covers everything. You didn't leave anything out in here. And I guess, um, you know, one of the things that I've always felt you got the most, like when we would talk and you would get the most excited around conversations that have to do with our stress hormones. So, and of course that puts on weight. So could we kind of start there, like talking about what are, what are the stress hormones? How do they cause us to put on weight? Sure. You know, I, I, I'm glad that you want to start there. I think it's the most important place to start, but I also think that a lot of people just feel a bit jaded talking about stress. Like it it just feels like, you know, kind of the old conversation, maybe a doctor or health professional has told them to, to reduce their stress and start to meditate. And, and so I'm glad you want to start there because I, I believe, and I think you'd probably agree with this, Donna, that when you unlock the stress hormones, when you unlock cortisol, it changes everything. I mean, it, it can get you halfway there in terms of natural hormone balance. It's so important so, yes, let's talk about the cortisol unlock. I think that's really crucial. Now, let's talk about resetting things as you answer that question. Yeah, well, the cool thing is that your hormones, the, the relationship between your hormones and then the receptor for the hormones, which is usually inside of a cell, the cool part is that you can change that relationship. You know, I sometimes joke, Donna, that it's, it's molecular sex between the hormone and the hormone receptor. (laughs) And we want to upgrade the sex that's happening because let's face it, so many of us have lousy molecular sex happening. And that's why maybe you feel depleted or tired or, you know, stressed out or like close to becoming a basket case, which was my story when I was in my thirties. So the idea here is that you want to upgrade that relationship between the hormone and the receptor. Cortisol is a great place to start because you can change that relationship inside of 72 hours between a hormone and its receptor. So that's what led to this particular program that I've been teaching for a number of years and and grew into what I now call the hormone reset diet. You can basically reset both your hormone levels and the receptor in 72 hours. That's amazing and very encouraging because usually we think, uh, you know, if I go in this program, it's going to take a long, long time before I see results. Well, you still may need a little time to see the results, but things are happening at the cellular level. 
And you can be certain of that. So that's really encouraging to know that. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of hope behind it, which I hope really will land with our listeners today. Because, you know, for a woman especially who's struggling with her hormones or maybe feels like uh, she's pushing a rock up the hill, it doesn't feel so good to have some gigantic project offered to her. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so much nicer, I think, to have a simpler strategy that is proven and effective. So that's really what we're talking about here. And really, we're talking about the stress hormones to a woman who's stressed out. The last thing she wants to do is that another thing to her plate to have to do. So let's talk about that. Like, I do think it's a good place to start because I arrived at this point in my own beliefs that the first thing you have to do is calm down these stress hormones, bring them into balance so you can sleep. I mean, how can you have healthy hormones if they're, if they're not, if you don't start there? So, so how about running with that thought? Sure. Well, there's a, a few things that I think are important when it comes to resetting the stress hormones and cortisol in particular. I think of cortisol as being, um, I used to joke that it's like the bad boyfriend that you had in high school or college, and you just knew it would, you know, sort of blow up in your face at some point. And, uh, and cortisol, you know, these hormones are not treated equally. Cortisol is actually the big, uh, the head honcho. I've even had someone suggest that we could call it Michael Cortisol Leone. It's kind of like the mafia <laughs> in the body when it's not working for you. It's, it's bossing around all the other hormones, including your thyroid and your estrogen and your progesterone. Cortisol can block progesterone receptors. Progesterone's like uh, nature's Valium. It calms you down. So when it comes to resetting this particular hormone, there's a few things that you want to keep in mind. In my program, my 21-day program, which I've been running for a few years, uh, it's seven different metabolic hormones that we reset in these three-day bursts. And on average, women lose about 15 pounds. Cortisol is actually kind of in the middle. It's uh, reset number four. And what I do is I, I have women get off of caffeine now, a lot of women run for cover when I say this, because, you know, I'm not saying you have to be off of caffeine the rest of your life. I'm saying, let's get you off of it for a couple of weeks. You start with a three-day reset where you get off of caffeine. And, you know, there's some people who do just fine with caffeine. And then there's those of us who find that it really adds to the stress hormones. For me in particular, I've got a, a set of genes that make me metabolize caffeine slowly. And so when I have a cup of coffee, even early in the morning, it will make me jittery. It'll make me snap at my kids. It'll also rob me of one to two hours of sleep at night. I have that gene too, by the way, the you one do. and two snip. Yeah. Clearing yeah. caffeine. And unfortunately, caffeine is also in chocolate. So a little piece of chocolate really goes a long way for me. And I definitely could never eat it at night. I wouldn't sleep that night if I did. So well, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and I think that gene, you know, it's it's a pretty common gene. And it, it also makes women more highly sensitive, more sensitive to our environment. So the chocolate, the caffeine, it just, you know, it jacks me up. And it mm -hmm. jacks up a lot of other women and, and leads to, it can lead to weight loss resistance. So it raises cortisol there's a lot of other things that I think are important in terms of the cortisol unlock, including a few supplements. And then, of course, uh, you warned people already that I'm a yoga teacher. So there's a few ways of retraining the mind that I think are important. And this is this is a really crucial point. You know, if, if you don't hear anything else today, I hope you hear this. I realized in my 30s when I hit a wall, when I maxed out and I was 25 pounds overweight and I just couldn't stand it another second. I realized that I was thinking my way into a hormone imbalance. And this is really important because you can make your hormone imbalance 10 times worse just with the disruptive thoughts that you have. So the untrained mind has a tendency to do it. It's almost like a default setting. And that's what we want to work with as well. We want to, you know, sort of upgrade our thoughts and our feelings so that they're in support of resetting the hormones. I think a lot of people can identify with that, that chattering mind that you can't turn off today. So the chattering mind is a kind of a, a result of having high cortisol. Right? It is. It makes it about 10 times worse. I mean, it's, 
And it's, uh, you know, I, I feel like this is one of those things that it's almost like a operations manual that I wish we all got at birth that, you know, the, the untrained mind, the monkey mind, the chattering, it just can make, um, it can make you have over worry. It can make you have a tendency to perseverate on certain thoughts, especially body dissatisfaction, which we know is at epidemic levels, 80% of women are not satisfied with their bodies. So this Mm. is what we really need to turn around. Mm. Wow. That's sort of depressing. 80% of us well, it's, it's a little depressing, but it's also, to me, a call to action. Mm, good point, that, yeah. That we need to step into, you know, kind of the mess of our body dissatisfaction, understand it, and then move through it. Okay, so if cortisol is down at number four in the, uh, of the reset program, let's start with one. Then what, what are the seven, is there, are there, yeah, there's seven altogether? Yes, there's seven, seven hormones of metabolism. Seven hormones of metabolism that I address in my book. There's other hormones, but these are the ones that I found to be the most important for women. And they are estrogen, insulin, leptin, cortisol, thyroid growth hormone, and then uh, testosterone. So the seven resets address all of these. It's funny, Donna, I feel like every time I talk to you, we end up talking about estrogen because there's such a a connection between food, the gut, and your estrogen levels. And that's where I start with um, helping women reset their hormones because I find that estrogen dominance, you know, just having an estrogen overload in the body is such a common problem. Definitely. And I, it is in men too. I guess we shouldn't leave the men out either because I look at men, particularly as they get older, and you can see what estrogen is doing to their body, the bloating. Uh, they're more feminine. They're losing their testosterone. They're losing their muscle mass and their fire energy. That's so, exactly right. And they yeah, have Would more. this diet be good for men? So it does work for men. I can tell you that um, I've been teaching it for a while. We've had about 5,000 people go through it. Of those people, about 95% have been female, but many of them bring along their husbands, spouses, partners for the ride, you know, to kind of sign up for this new way of eating so that they can reset their hormones. So men really benefit it from benefit from it too. My husband in particular, he does it every single time with me when I teach this program online. Oh, good for him. Wow. And I think he looks pretty hot. (laughs) Just just saying. Hi, honey. Yeah, he's always right there. Ray, he always has your back. That's one thing I love about him. I love that, too. He's great. He's a good Um, one. Well, okay, so there's estrogen first, and then the next one was um, insulin. So what what can you tell us about insulin? Yeah, insulin was really where I started with this particular 21-day program because insulin's really the hormone that controls whether a calorie can make you fat. So whether you take a calorie and you either use it as fuel or you store it as fat. And I found some really interesting data showing that you can reset your insulin levels and your insulin receptors in 72 hours. And that's what got me started on these three-day bursts. So it really started with insulin because the data is the strongest with insulin. It's really the, the hormone of metabolism that we know the best. So if you're someone who's got a broken metabolism, you know, maybe you're overweight or you have uh, your skinny fat, you know, maybe you've got a little flabby, you're a little more flabby than you'd like to be, not quite as lean as you want to be. Chances are you've got an issue with insulin. And the cool part is, you know, with insulin, when you cut out the sugar and you cut out the artificial sweeteners and you start to get estrogen back on track, and you start to wean off of caffeine, it just makes such a difference in terms of how insulin is moving around the body. You know, all of these hormones move around the body kind of like text messages. And you want those messages to come in really clear and crisp, and you want to ungunk the receptors. So that's what we do in the second reset. We ungunk the insulin receptor and reset the insulin level. You know, anytime I read one of your blog posts or talk to you, I always have a smile on my face because you have such a great sense of humor, a really a gift with words, and you paint great pictures for us. So can you do that now? I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, give us an example of how you reset a couple of your hormones. Like, can you give us an example of estrogen and insulin? How, how you, would you reset 
your receptors in your cells with those two hormones. Sure, sure. And thank you for that. I We've got to have fun as we talk about this. Otherwise, it's pretty miserable. So yeah, we've got to have a lot of fun. So let me give you a couple of examples. And this one is a little controversial as well. So I'm going to start with estrogen. That's our first reset. And I call that reset meatless. So I'm giving you a little, you know, spoiler alert of what's coming here. What we know is that meat eaters, and we're talking here mostly about folks who eat conventional meat, because that's what a lot of the studies are based on. Meat eaters have much higher estrogen levels in their body, in their blood, compared to vegetarians or vegans. Now, I'm not saying you need to become a vegetarian, but what I'm saying is, okay, what can we learn from that? Well, meat eaters tend to have less fiber. We also know that they tend to produce more beta-glucuronidase, which is uh, kind of a fancy, complicated enzyme in the body that will undo liver detoxification when it comes to estrogen. And -hmm. it makes estrogen recirculate in the body almost like bad karma, because you want to use estrogen, you want to have it in your body, use it once, and then poop it out, pee it out. That's really the, the goal with estrogen, and not to let it keep recirculating in your body uh, which is the problem if you have too much beta-glucuronidase. Now, there's other reasons why people do it. Um, you can also recirculate estrogen because you have dysbiosis or something called uh, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. There's lots of different reasons why people recirculate, but the the solution here is to pretty dramatically and slowly increase your fiber. So I encourage people to get to... Uh, somewhere around 35 to 50 grams of fiber a day, increasing slowly by about five grams per day, and to cut out meat. And this also speaks to one of your, uh, one of the loves of your life and the loves of my life as well, which is nutrigenomics. You know, I happen to have the genes that make me do much better with omega threes compared to um, saturated fat. So when I eat more fish. Too. I do better. We're just alike. I, I think we were Me maybe too. separated at birth, Donna. <laughs> yes. I have the same genes. But I have looked at a lot of people's genes tests, and it's very common. I think we all fit in that category, so we're all alike. It's very common, and there's been studies looking at women who want to lose weight, and they found that when they eat more of the omega-3s, when they get more cold water fish that's low in mercury compared to red meat, they lose more weight. So the idea here is that you go meatless and you also get off of alcohol. And, uh, you know, this is where I I have to say busy working mothers just look at me cross-eyed when I say that. But I think it's really important to detoxify, to give your liver a break, to reset the button on your estrogen, and to do that once a quarter or once every six months, depending on your own biochemistry. So the first reset where we're resetting estrogen, you go meatless, you get get off the alcohol. And then the second reset, which starts on day four, is to reset insulin. And that's where you get off of sugar and artificial sweeteners. And we start to dial in your net carbohydrates. So those are a few examples, Donna, of how to reset those two hormones. And when you say meatless, Sarah, you mean um, still fish and other meat. You're not like talking about becoming a vegan here, right? Just to no, clarify. No, I, you know, I, I wish I had a good term for it because let me back up for a minute. So one of the things that I've done in the past 10 years is I, I've gotten really interested in evolutionary biology and the paleo movement. I went paleo, Donna. And I started eating much more uh, red meat. It was sourced, you know, pretty from pretty healthy places and grass fed. And, you know, I knew the lineage. I knew the farmers. And I actually gained weight. There's wow. there's a num- probably because of my genetics. Mm-hmm. But there's mm-hmm. a number of studies now showing that women have a hard time getting to a certain body mass index, like less than 23 when they eat paleo. And I think it has to do with the fact that um, I think women do better when they're managing their estrogen carefully and too much red meat can raise their estrogen too much. I think men are able to tolerate it better uh, and women just have difficulty. There's definitely this difference between men and women when it comes to weight loss. And I think a lot of it has to do with estrogen. 
I am so glad that you're saying this because I've watched the paleo movement grow. Remember, I've been doing this work for so long, over 25 years. I've seen a lot of movements come and go. Uh, it was, before paleo, the uh, raw vegan, and everybody was into dates and, uh, you know, agave and all kinds of sugars and things, a lot of fruit. Uh, so they were going way off in the direction uh, of too much sugar in the diet. So I kind of understood the whole switch back toward the uh, paleo movement. Uh, that's what we tend to do as we swing this way and then we swing way back that way. We don't ever seem to get right in the middle there. We're not into balance, unfortunately. But I'm so glad you said this about uh, the paleo because, no, again, the principle of uniqueness, and now the genes are showing that there is a principle of uniqueness, we are all different. And I'm, again, like you in that direction. I can't eat only meat. And the other thing, that another gene that I have, the this gene called the comp gene, which I'm read there, meaning I've, I'm, um, I have two uh, SNPs, you know, from both parents, I got this gene, this genetic variation. And so I have high levels, uh, naturally have high levels of dopamine and cortisol and uh, not, not cortisol, but um, adrenaline and noradrenaline. So I, cho I've chosen a, a job that's kind of stressful. And then I way overfill my plate with things to do. And then I have all this stress that I can't clear that's why I have to have the grains in my diet. Now, they're not, you know, quinoa. Like, they're not the kind of grains that feed yeast and have a lot of sugar in them. They are calming, though. So that's that's one thing people also don't understand, I think, about food is they all have a front and a back to them. And if you've got a lot of stress in your body, as you were talking about in the beginning, these grains have a calming nature to them. I think also preparing them properly, you know, soaking them and... I tend to cook mine in a lot of uh, with a lot of water for a long time and let them simmer so that they get broken down and are real digestible. And then I add a lot of vegetables with them, so they're. And then I don't have a whole lot of them, so I know. And then we add fermented foods too, so I know that they are very, very healthy. And then I see the paleo movement over there, you know, making people feel bad if they're eating grain. So I was really thrilled about that. But um, when you said that in your book, but can you, do you could you elaborate a little more on that, like? And also, I'm curious, what is your blood type, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> My blood type is so positive. Oh, you know, a lot of people who who hear what I say about resetting your hormones with your food, they say, you know, yes, but I'm O positive. Like, I, I just, I can't, I can't do that. I've got to get my meat. And yes. And, you know, I, it's funny that you mentioned the raw vegans and the paleo movement and, you know, kind of these more extremes that exist. We tend to love extremes. What I found when I was a raw vegan was that it was very energizing for me, but I actually didn't lose weight. You know, there's all these raw vegans who just lose dramatic amounts of weight. I didn't lose weight. I did this after I had my uh, second child and I was trying to lose the baby weight. The weight did not come off. I slept a little less at night. I was very energized. I was also spending hours in the kitchen preparing food, but it wasn't quite the right fit for me. But then I added shellfish to what I was eating. I focused on, you know, big salads and lots of vegetables and I added shellfish and that's when I started to lose weight. I was missing some of the, the fat that I needed and it probably also helped me with my iron, which women tend to need. Then later I, I went paleo and it just, I think that it was too much saturated fat for me. You know, I've got a favorite paleo cookbook that, that I was using and she had these bacon cups with, um, you know, just a lot of very heavy on the red meat. And I just could feel in my body that I wasn't processing it well. It wasn't a good fit for me. And there's some biology to support that, you know, we, related to, uh, the astrobilome, the part of the microbiome, your set of bacteria that, that uh, are in your gut and their DNA and how they interact with the food that you eat. There's a subset of your microbiome that controls your estrogen levels. And I just don't think paleo was the right fit for me in terms of my astrobilome. Now, this word astrobilome, I had never heard of that word at all until you said it for the first time. And I still am not really sure what it means. So can we talk about that and just kind of wrap up in our last few minutes here uh, with that concept. And then, of course, everybody's got to go out. I hope we've made people very curious about the book and <laughs> they're going to want to go and get a copy as soon as they can. So what is the estrobilome? 
Yeah, the strobilome is a really interesting concept. And I, I think the next 10 years of medicine is going to be all about the microbiome. We're still just, I think, in our infancy in terms of understanding our gut bacteria and their DNA and how it interacts with our food and our lifestyle and our genetics. So the astrobilome is the subset of the microbiome, the aggregate microbes, mostly bacteria, that impact your estrogen levels. So this is important for both men and women. I think it's especially important in women because they have higher estrogen levels in general. And it's, uh, it's a part of your control center for your estrogen levels. So let me break that down for a minute. You know, we used to think that it was the control center for your hormones was mainly the, the part of your brain that talks to your adrenals and to your thyroid and to your gonads, ovaries in the women and uh, testes in the men. We call that the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal thyroid gonadal axis. That's quite a mouthful, I know. But now it turns out that there's more than just the HPA TG to control your hormone levels. Your microbiome plays a major role. It controls testosterone levels, estrogen levels, such as in the estrobilome. So that's what it is. That was kind of a, a long answer, but it's something we want to be paying attention to. Like when you've got a fork full of food, you know, maybe you've got your cultured vegetables because you've been following Donna for a while and you know you need a lot of those each day. That is one of the best things you could do to feed your astrobilome in a positive way. Yeah, and I think, um, too, the research shows the 80% plant-based diet, lots of um, your carbs, in a sense, if you want to call. I, I always kind of, you know, I tend not to call vegetables carbs because people get real confused. But I, but I do think a high vegetable diet is really, really important, too, for that, wouldn't you say? Would you agree? Oh, I totally agree. I think it's essential. You know, I, if you ask 100 nutritionists about grain or dairy or eggs, you know, you get, you get people divided along certain lines. But if you ask them about vegetables, everyone is for vegetables. I mean, it, there's mm -hmm, just no mm -hmm. question that the fiber, the phytonutrients, they're, they're just essential to your, the health of your cells. Well, Mark Hyman did the forward for the book, and he's got a term now I've noticed he's using called pagan which is, you know, it's kind of a cool term because obviously it's really a lots and lots of vegetables is basically what he's telling people to eat and a little bit of animal protein. Well, okay, so sort of as a wrap-up question, can you tell me and all of us listening here, you know, you wrote the book for a reason. What's the big takeaway? Why will people read this book? There's other books out there, lots of books. Why your book? Well, my book is a 21-day a plan to reset your hormones. And I think what's unique about my book is that it's, it's really designed for women in a, a coaxing, gentle way to reset hormones naturally. Not in the deprived drill sergeant way, but just to really help women using a cell-to-soul approach so that they can really learn to love the foods that are superb for them, that are superb for their hormones, their hormone receptors, and, you know, to reset those in 21 days. Okay, everybody who's out there listening, uh, the title of the book is The Hormone Reset Diet, Heal Your Metabolism to Lose Up to 15 Pounds in 21 Days. So that's three weeks, seven hormones, 15 pounds. Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time out. I know how busy you are. This is a fantastic book. I want to encourage everyone to read it. I just want to thank you so much for writing the book and being a champion for women. Mm, thank you, Donna. So happy to be with you and so happy to be with your listeners. Great. Well, everybody, I want to just thank you for joining us today on Body Ecology Living. Also, Feel free to leave a comment on our Facebook page. If there's someone you want me to interview or something you want to know about, let me know. Tell me what you'd like to learn about next. And most of all, have a great day.